In problem 18, we have a right circular cylinder, a tank that is 20 feet tall. So we're still using British units here and filled halfway with water. Filled with 10 feet of water. We're trying to pump all the water out of the tank. So we have a ho hose going in here. I'm gonna go ahead and draw the hose. Where's the bottom of the hose? Who knows? You could pretend it's at the bottom of the tank. And we got a pump up here, pumping the water out. Question is, how much work does it take to pump all the water out? In foot pounds, and you, you probably want to convert to joules before you submitted it to some contractor who's going to do it for you. We do also need to know the radius of the tank. The radius of the tank is given to be six feet. What's the work done? Here's the method. I think it's a little bit mysterious why this method works. Figure out the work done to lift a thin slice of water up to the top. Add those up, let delta y go to zero, do an integral, get the answer. What? How can that possibly work? I mean, in reality, in real life, water is made out of molecules, and those molecules are like bumping all over the, each other all over the place, not quite as energetic as a gas, but energetic enough as a liquid. And, you know, you, the thin slices of water don't go up by themselves. I even drew the hose in there. All the molecules have to go down toward the bottom before they go back up again. So somehow, I did ask a physicist once how to justify that, and they told me, I'm not sure. So even a physicist that I asked wasn't quite sure how to justify that this approach still gives you the right answer. But we're trusting the authors because they're probably trusting somebody else. Saying that this approach of pretending you can slice the water and think about thin slices of water going up, like levitating or something, to figure out the work done. It's a problem solving technique that still gives the work done correctly somehow. What's the height of that? You could call it, well, Y. What's the thin width? How about delta Y? How far does the thin slice have to go up to the top of the tank? Looks like it's 20 minus Y. You're starting to feel like you would know what to do here. Maybe you gotta keep working at it though. So we wanna figure out, well, first of all, how much does this thin slice weigh? That's probably the first thing to figure out. Delta F is how much it weighs, F because weight is a force. We're using British units, so we don't have to multiply by 9.8. We don't even have to multiply by 32 feet per second squared. Pounds is already a force. We do need the weight density of water in British units to finish this though. You can look it up in the book. It's in the book. It's 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Cubic foot's about this big. Imagine lift, filling that with water and lifting it up. Uh, it's bigger than a gallon of milk. It's going to weigh 62.4 pounds. I don't know. Maybe it's a little hard to believe, but that's what we're told. So it's... Um, 62.4 times the volume. This would be in pounds per cubic foot. This would be in cubic feet, giving you a result in pounds. But what's the volume? This is a thin disk. It's cylindrical with a tiny height. Pi r squared for the area times the height. Radius is six, pi times six squared, 
times the height, which is y. All this is going to be the small amount of weight in pounds. Did I forget my delta y? Yes, delta, that should be a delta y there. Yes, thank you. So the small amount of work is approximately delta f times the distance. It's an approximation because the distance is not constant. It's ever so slightly different depending on whether you're on the top of the slice or the bottom of the slice. So this is an approximation. Now let's use the calculator now. Six squared is 36 times 62.4, 2,246.4 pi times delta y times 20 minus y. The total work then is the sum of the small works approximately a sum of these things here. I'll just do this for sake of time. Let delta y go to zero. The total work is an integral of 2,246.4 pi times 20 minus y dy. What are the limits of integration? Look at the picture, y is the height. The bottom of the tank, y is zero. At the top, not of the tank, but of the water level, this is the top of the water right here, y is 10. So y goes from zero to 10. This will give us the answer in foot pounds for the work done. And somehow physicists can justify that this is right but this approach to solving the problem is correct. And we end up with 1.06 times 10 to the sixth foot pounds, over a million foot pounds. I don't remember offhand what the conversion is to joules. Yeah, we can look it up. I think it's maybe over a million joules as well. What if we were taking y to be not the height of the slice of the water, but its distance from the top? If this were a y instead, y would not go from zero to 10 in that case. It would go from 10 to 20 if y were a downward distance here from the top. You can confirm that. If I were to do this integral from replace the 20 y minus y with just a y. If I were to do from zero to 10, it gives the wrong answer. It's from 10 to 20 that it gives the right answer. The units of this is foot pounds, foot feet times pounds. So it's not that you can't do it, letting y be the distance from the top of the tank. But if you do that, not only do you change your formula here, you change your limits of integration. That's different than what happened with the chain. It's different than what would happen if the tank was full from, from the beginning. We would use the integral from zero to 20 in both cases, if it was full.